50,000 years ago, two hominid species met for the first time, the Homo neanderthalis and the Homo sapiens. In just a few thousand years, the Neanderthals disappeared, never to come back. But what happened? We were weaker and less adapted to the cold. We had smaller brains. Why did we survive? and not the Neanderthals. Hi there, welcome to Campsite Sweden. In this episode, we will talk about our closest relative, the Neanderthal. Modern humans and Neanderthal coexisted in Europe for a couple of thousand years. But soon after we met them, the Neanderthal numbers dwindled to the point of extinction and eventually they disappeared. But what happened? And how was our relationship with them? This is the story of the Neanderthals. So how did we become two species in the first place? Well, 800,000 years ago, a group of hominids split from Africa. They moved north and eventually they ended up in what would be Europe. And uh, the larger population remained in Africa. But this group that migrated out from Africa, they adapted to the colder and darker climate in Europe. And they, will, they would remain there for five to six hundred thousand years and adapt to the environment, developing their own culture and developing their own biology. And they became what we today call the Neanderthals. So when the first Neanderthals were discovered uh, in the 19th century, scientists portrayed them as violent beasts, unintelligent, primitive, cavemen. Something like this. <laughs> Maybe you notice there that uh, they actually coexisted with dinosaurs. I would say that's quite a, a revolutionary discovery. <laughs> that's how our relatives have been portrayed. Neanderthals used sophisticated tools. They used uh, spears and stone tools. And they were very skilled hunters. They could control fire and they could start fire. They used various cooking techniques and uh, they uh, bury their dead. So they were very advanced also compared to us. As this group of hominids uh, approached Europe or the Northern Hemisphere, they uh, encountered a very cold climate and a very dark climate. So they had to adapt. And over several hundreds of thousands of years, they evolved into a different species, what we now call the Neanderthal. They became very sturdy they had short limbs to retain heat. They had um, large eyes to let in more sunlight. They had a big nose to warm the air they inhaled and lots of other adaptions. And they developed a very effective body fat storage so they could store more fat. But they suffered a high risk of traumatic injury uh, if you look at the skeletons we have found from Neanderthals, 70 to 80% of them display various traumatic injuries, you know, bone fractures and skull fractures and signs of violence in some way. But probably this was, it's, it can be due to their uh, risky hunting strategies. Maybe they had to get closer to their prey than, than modern humans. So while the Neanderthals were in Europe, their ancestor was still in Africa. And that ancestor eventually evolved 
into our own species, the Homo sapiens. And 50,000 years ago, our own species, Homo sapiens, began migrating out from Africa. They met the Neanderthals. The modern human met the Neanderthal. After a few thousand years, they were gone. The Neanderthals got extinct. So, after having been separated from our common ancestor 600,000 years, humans and Neanderthals met for the first time. So, how was our relationship with the Neanderthals? Was it turbulent? Was it a, a dream come true? Whatever it was, it was... Uh... So, in uh, hindsight, it looks as if we got along pretty well with the Neanderthals. Some say that we competed for food and that modern humans were more socially and cognitive developed uh, to gather food and to acquire resources. They could form larger groups and uh, greater societies and thereby they had an edge. Others say that we, modern humans, we simply killed off the Neanderthals. We, uh, we fought with them and we, we killed them. But uh, the truth is probably less dramatic, but still a bit tragic. It seems as they were bred into extinction, meaning that they were simply assimilated into the human genome through breeding with humans. So, did the Neanderthals really disappear? The first Neanderthal genome was published in 2010, and it strongly indicates interbreeding between humans and Neanderthals. So, depending on where you are from in the world, your genome, your uh, blueprint to your body and who you are, contains up to 7% Neanderthal DNA. So, the answer to the question, did they die out? No, not really. They live on in all of us as a remnant of our past. And that is very inspiring. Thank you so much for watching and uh, a big thank you to all new subscribers. I'll see you real soon in the next one. Until then, take care.